Today's video, we are talking all things thrifted Christmas. We've got wall decor, shelf decor, so many ornament ideas. Decorating for the holidays can be so expensive, so I hope you leave this video feeling inspired to know that it doesn't have to be. I've got 50 ideas to share with you. The first several are projects you all have not seen. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I think when we start to see all of our favorite high-end retailers release their new pieces, it is so tempting to just go out and purchase because we love the way it's styled, we love the way it looks. Now, of course, every now and then you do get lucky at the thrift store finding exactly what you were kind of looking for. But don't forget about the power of just using things that you already have. Some of you may remember a few months ago, I found this olive tree here. I changed the olive leaves for these fall ones for the fall months. And now I'm going to take the same planted faux tree and turn it into one that is more seasonally appropriate for Christmas and winter. It really is as simple as just removing the fall specific leaves, putting them in storage until next year, and then now just removing small sections from stems and garlands I already have and applying them to this faux tree. A piece of holiday decor that I think is so fun are advent calendars, but what really just sucks the fun right out of it is when you have to pay over $100. Even if you're not somebody who wants to thrift or DIY anything, I still recommend versus going to Crate and Barrel and Pottery Barn, go the Home Goods or TJ Maxx route because you can find almost identical things for at least a third of the price. But again, just wanting to use things I already have, you might remember this piece that I thrifted previously. And instead of just, again, going out, buying something new, now having to store something else, I'm just going to make this function like an advent calendar for the holiday season. Because this wall decor had more than enough openings, I decided I would just kind of sporadically cut down these small pieces of wood and just fill in those slots until I had 24. For the wood pieces that I used for these rectangles, I just took the bottom of a wood tray that I wasn't using and I took my miter saw to cut these down. I used a gel stain to stain both the fronts and backs in the color coffee. Now, I could have chosen to use more wood to build little individual boxes, but for the sake of time, I just used some heavy duty cardstock and made boxes for the backings of each of these wooden rectangles. For the numbers, I just grabbed these off of Amazon and I just spray painted them with some really pretty gold metallic spray paint. I added each number with a little bit of wood glue and then just finished it off with a push pin for the top. And this was the end result. The only new things I had to buy for this project were the numbers from Amazon and the cardstock because I had all of the other supplies already. And the best part is when Christmas is over, I can just store the boxes separately and still keep this wall decor piece up year round. One of my favorite ways to decorate for the holiday season is through candles, and this can be a really affordable DIY project. So for example, I found this glass bowl here for just 50 cents. That was the perfect shape. And then I also found this white Christmas Yankee candle for just $3. Simply combined the two pieces together. It smells so good, and it also looks absolutely beautiful. In order to do this on a thrifted budget, it's really important when you go to the thrift store that you're not focusing on what the item is or the color. The only thing I'm focusing on when I'm in the thrift store is the shape. So if I wanna make some jumbo ornaments, I need something that's sphere shaped. So you can use globes, bowling balls, or for example, I found a ton of these styrofoam balls that I believe were probably used for some sort of a play or class project. Just going to trim those down and instead of going out and buying more material, I looked in what I was getting ready to donate. I found this sequined skirt, just cut it down to the appropriate size, made one kind of hem on the side to kind of close it off. And then we're just going to do a running stitch to the top and then to the bottom just to kind of cinch it all together. When they are made of styrofoam, this makes this project so easy because you can push all of the excess fabric inside so it gives you a nice kind of sphere shape. 
for the top piece, you can truthfully use anything, but this is just a mason jar and an old drawer pull knob that I wasn't using, and I just combined the two together with E6000. Another kind of shape that I was really interested in, specifically for outdoors and for my front porch, I wanted to have some really giant bells. And these bells, even from Home Goods, are like $40 a piece. So I thought maybe we can try to make this a little bit more affordably. Just took a metal waste bin that was on clearance. And because again, these are going to be going outside, I wanted to weigh them down so they kind of just wouldn't fly away every time it was really windy or storming. And so I just used cement to the bottom to weigh them down. I added a small prong there in the middle. So if I want to hang an actual bell for the sound, um, I have the ability to do so. For the paint, I'm just using this antique gold spray paint by Design Masters and then just distressing it with a little bit of antiquing wax. Added my top piece on and this was the end result. An easy just kind of swap is just taking something that you already have, but make it seasonal. So for example, I always have cutting boards sitting out. I always have a cutting board hanging on my peg rail, but this time I found this cutting board here. Now, if you know me and my channel, you know I love a lot of primitive pieces and antique pieces. So initially this tree would have been fine, but I really wanted to add a kind of aged look. And you can do this a variety of different ways. I typically like to start with a flat head, then a hammer, and then a good sand, just to get that rusticity punch in my space. But in order to make it look really authentic, you want to, if there's a hole there, make the hole look kind of jagged, you know, make sure that it's not super perfect. That's kind of the point. And then for color, because we had just this one strip here that was just pulling a little bit too orangey red for my liking, I went in with some watered down melted chocolate. This is always my first layer. Second layer is going to be watered down Tinsmith Gray. This is one that I use often in projects. And then I found this little leather strap here, added it to the top for a means to hang it. And this was the end result. A material that I plan on incorporating in my Christmas this year is crystal. Anthropology has a ton of really beautiful crystal options, but they're very expensive. So the first thing that I found were these glass crystal icicles, and then I also found a set of six of these. I'm not sure what they are supposed to be used for, but I purchased them because to me, they look like little crystal trees. I just strung some little fishing line through there. I think it's just going to make a really kind of beautiful and unique luxe addition to my Christmas tree this year, but it was done so, so affordably because I shopped it at the thrift store. I know guys, it is so early. It's not even Halloween by the time this video goes live, but if you're someone like myself and you thrift and DIY almost all of your holiday decor, it's really important that you start now. Now, sometimes you can get lucky at the thrift store and find like an identical dupe to something you would find from a high-end store. Like I found these really beautiful icicles. I found 20 of them for just a dollar and 29 cents. Also found this really beautiful glass bell here, but more often than not, the ornament section I would say is almost always a little bit picked over. So I recommend just kind of trying to think outside the box and see what you can come up with. So I found these. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be used for, but we're gonna make them ornaments. So the first thing I needed to do was just remove all of those wooden cubes from that dowel. So that way these can be our kind of like present ornaments. Also found the little wooden trees for just 49 cents each. Now these are not already ornaments, so we will have to turn them into ornaments very easily. I did want to do kind of a color wash on these so they match my floors a little bit better. They were unfinished and ready for paint or stain. So I just mixed a few stains together that I felt like matched my floors a little bit better and just applied that generously and then wiped off any excess. So for the trees, to make these into some sort of hanging ornaments, you can grab little small O-ring 
hooks and just screw those into the top. I could not find any in my stash, so I just used a little finishing nail and we'll just attach it that way. For the presents, I just went in my stash and I grabbed some velvet ribbon and we're just going to wrap the ribbon around and tie it like a present. Again, taking a little finishing nail, I didn't want to have the ornament, I guess, just like sitting straight up and down. So I put the nail in one of the corners of the wood cube. So then that way it would just be kind of slanting down. So for three of the present ornaments and four of the wooden tree ornaments, I spent less than $5, which is even better than places like the Dollar Tree, but we're getting a really high end look overall. But oftentimes you don't even need to spend any money to get a really similar look. For example, I think a few years ago, maybe now, I thrifted these wood houses with a little taper candle holder. These are an old hearth and hand collection for Christmas. Um, I love these, I think these are great, but you kind of don't even need to spend any money to make these. If you have scrap wood and taper candlesticks that you can cut down at home. So going back to my neighbor's free stash, I grabbed that smaller wide plank there and we're just going to make two of these little taper candle houses as well. Taking my miter saw, I'm just going to move it to a 45 degree angle. You just do that by twisting that knob there so you can maneuver exactly the degree that you're trying to cut to. Some of you may remember when I found this like huge bag at the Goodwill in Cleveland of these taper candle holders, but they had no base. So these are perfect for projects like these. I saved what I didn't use the last time, and we're just going to drill a small hole in the side of the tops of each of these little houses. Just try to pick a drill bit that is slightly smaller than your taper candle holder, so that way it can twist and stay nice in place. Before attaching them, I just gave a sand to both the front, the back, and all of the sides to these little houses. One thing I did not include is I did add a little back piece so then that way these wouldn't fall backwards and they would have kind of something to stand on. And that really wraps it up for this one. Literally free and I think will make a beautiful addition for the holiday season. For many of us, one of the most expensive purchases we will make during the holiday season is a Christmas tree. So Crate and Barrel Pottery Barn have really beautiful trees, but they're oftentimes incredibly expensive. And most of the trees you will find at the thrift store are not going to necessarily give you that high end look. So you do have to be really selective. Some of the things that I really look for, number one is how realistic the actual branches look. So as you can see here, not only is this tree incredibly sparse, but also the branches look incredibly fake in comparison to this tree right next to it, which is fuller and more realistic looking and about the same price. So when I found this tree that was seven and a half feet tall, nice and full and very realistic branches for just $40. And on top of that, I had a 20% off coupon, bringing the overall cost down to just $32. The only thing that was kind of wrong with this tree was that the previous owners didn't remove the existing lights and one of the branches from the very bottom was missing. So I just turned that side to the window where no one's going to see it. And then I had to spend a little bit of time here just removing all of these existing lights. With all of the old lights removed, it's just time now to assemble the tree and fluff the tree. So a couple tips, you just wanna wear some long sleeves and some gloves so that way you can kind of really get in there. You wanna work from inside out and I personally like to work from top to bottom. But however you choose to do it, just take your time with this step because it will make your tree look that much more full. So after I finished fluffing the tree, I kind of, I'm running into a little issue. There's basically like no space for any presents to go under the tree. So I saw this hack on TikTok. You could do it one of two ways. The way that I'm gonna show you is with kind of one of those wooden crates that you could pick up at Michael's. I ended up finding mine at the Goodwill bins. So this just gave like a little bit of extra space here. And also it's making your tree look a little bit taller, which I guess is good. I ended up snapping this one with a hammer just so that way the center of the tree would be kind of more secure. Uh, even with the zip ties, I felt like it was still a little bit wobbly. So if that is the case for you, just go ahead and hammer that down and it'll pop right out. Do I'm gonna just drill a small hole on this side. So that way it has, the zip tie has something to kind of click onto. Cause right now none of my zip ties are long enough and I want it to be like a very secure, like it's still pretty secure right now. Like it's not going anywhere really. It's gonna pull tight on this. 
until I can't get any tighter. That way, everybody stays nice and safe. With our tree safe in place, it's time now to add our tree skirt or our tree collar. And I did not have any luck finding any tree collars or really any tree skirts, but one thing I do often find are really beautiful blankets. So when I found this blanket at the Goodwill for just over $4, I thought it was absolutely perfect as I'm going with a more modern aesthetic. All I'm going to do is just kind of fold it in half and drape it around the bottom. And doing this is really great, especially if you've lifted your tree because you have a lot more fabric to kind of work with. Another added bonus, if you're tight on space, this blanket can be used in a different way after Christmas is over versus a tree skirt you can really only use for the holiday season. So now that we've got the skirt on, it's time to add our lights. So I ordered these off of Amazon. I can link them for you guys if you'd like. They were pretty affordable. I ended up getting two boxes and why I got them was like you can literally, they're LED, one, two, they can't break. Like I, I could step on this and it wouldn't break. And I think that that like from a safety perspective is always good, but then also they don't really tangle, which is nice. So we are going to go through this step-by-step. Step. I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm going to weave each branch kind of individually, just like a pre-lit tree would be lit. So you guys might remember if you've been following this channel when I found this garland here at the Goodwill bins for less than a dollar and I simply just wrapped it around a Dollar Tree hoop ring to kind of mimic something I saw at the Hearth and Handline at Target. Initially, I had used these more rustic, smaller bells for this wreath, but I ended up placing those bells on my fireplace mantle and also I wanted the bells that I used to feel, again, really modern. So when I went to Home Goods, I was kind of looking for something that kind of was just dangling down, very dramatic, and I came across these ones, which were perfect. And then at the thrift store, I grabbed some thick black ribbon to tie a kind of, again, slouchy bow. And again, it's just going to enhance that overall modern aesthetic that I'm really trying to achieve. One of the decorative accents that I really loved in so many of the images that I was pulling from were all of these decorative spheres and orbs, but unfortunately I could not find any that I loved that were also in my price range. And one thing I've been seeing a lot on TikTok and Instagram is people using like inflatable like yoga balls and things like that to make these kind of oversized ornaments. And so when I went to the thrift store, I wasn't really paying attention to what the item was supposed to be used for or anything like that. I was just paying attention to the shape and that it was a solid thing. Some of the items that I came across were bowling balls, and you guys have seen me use bowling balls as a vase before. I also found a globe at the Goodwill bins for a buck, a moon lamp, and this very interesting margarita pump dispenser. Now that I've collected and cleaned all of these very random sphere-shaped items, it's time to customize them. So obviously you can do whatever color you would like, but again, I'm trying to stick with that really modern aesthetic. So I went in with black first and then layered several different metallic spray paints that I had on hand. Once I was happy with how one side of these now ornament balls looked, I then just flipped it around and did the exact same process to the other side until they were all completely covered. Once those were dried and sealed, I then needed to figure out what I was gonna use for the cap part. So when I went to the thrift store, I found these votive candle holders and I was going to use just that bottom gold piece for the cap part of these now giant ornaments. But some of them were not coming off as easily as others, so I just decided to soak them all with some hot, soapy water, and then they were able to just kind of pop right off. And now it's just time to attach them. So I would not use hot glue here. I would either do super glue gel like I'm using here or E6000. I tried to just primarily stick to the rim of these metal caps, so that way there wasn't going to be a lot of residue around the top of the ornament ball. And then for the hook part, I thought about using these ones from Hobby Lobby, but I remembered I had had these in my stash and decided to just, again, attach those with some super glue gel. 
and this is how these modern ornament orbs turned out. I think they add that kind of luxe look to my space, but because I thrifted and DIY'd them, they were so budget friendly. So Pottery Barn every year releases new special ornaments, but just one ornament can cost you upwards around $20. So when I saw this acorn cluster ornament, I knew I could create it for basically nothing because I had all of the supplies already on hand. To start, I used these three Easter eggs and I just spray painted the bottoms white. If you have already white Easter eggs, you can just skip that step. And then you just wanna find three pine cones that are similar in size and shape. So the first thing I did with these is I just kind of made a small cut in the middle of the pine cone so then that way I could push down the remainder so it would be able to slide into this painted Easter egg bottom nicely to give kind of the silhouette of an acorn shape. I added hot glue to the inside of each of the Easter egg bottoms so that way the pine cones would stick together. And then now it was just time to add our yarn. Starting out by just tying a knot in the yarn and then hot gluing that down to the bottom of each of the Easter eggs until it's completely covered. Just repeating that process until all of them are completely covered. And if you take a closer look, the top of the pine cones have a kind of metallic or shiny appearance. So I decided to take this glitter glue that I picked up last year for Christmas and adding that to the top of each of the pine cones. Then now taking my twine, I'm just going to again tie a knot and then hot glue that to the top of each pine cone. Gathering them all at the top once completed and tying that in a knot. I also made little twine bows as you can see in the inspiration here. And I think you have a super similar look to the Pottery Barn version, but this cost me essentially nothing. Next up, we will be making an advent calendar. So Pottery Barn has this really beautiful lit glitter house advent calendar, but it's just about $150, which is just a little bit out of my price range. So when I was at the thrift store, I saw this huge wooden house that was kind of this like lavender color, but I loved that it had lights that poked in from the back. So it was initially $15 and then I had 20% off of that. So I thought this would be worth the gamble to see if I could make this work for an advent calendar for my family this year. I started out by just removing all of those metal stars and then unclipping all of the lights from the back so it would be ready for sanding and painting. Because these galvanized stars were just hot glued on, they actually popped off quite easily. So after removing those though, it kind of created this dip in the middle of where they used to be. So I took 120 grit sandpaper to each of the areas that had stars previously so it was nice and smooth. The next thing I did was I took some spray paint to each of the windows just to give them a more kind of festive feel instead of the dark metal. With everything sanded down and the windows painted, it's just time now to prime the piece. So I went in with a Dollar Tree roller brush and some primer that I already had on hand. And that's a great tip to save even a little bit of money, get these sets at the Dollar Tree because they're so much more cost effective than going to a hardware store. In between coats, I wanted to make a little wreath for the top, so I found this kind of sparse garland at the bins, so I grabbed two sprigs together and combined them to make a wreath for the top. I pre-drilled some small holes on top of each of the windows, adding small dabs of hot glue to each pin, and that is so these little red bags that I got off of Amazon can hang from something. For just about $25, I have a really substantial piece of Christmas decor that I can always add more to later, but I'm really happy with the end result for this Christmas season. The direction that I wanted to go in this year for Christmas was definitely more modern than I went in previous years. And a lot of the inspiration that I found came from Crate and Barrel. For example, I love these Leanne Ford ornaments, but a set of six of them will cost me just about $45. So I thought we could try to make this for a lot less. One thing I happen to have a lot of is metallic spray paint. So I started out by spraying all of these ornaments down with some metallic oil rubbed bronze spray paint. While the spray paint is a bit tacky still, I'm going to add a dusting of of baking powder. Once that kind of is all dried and solidified, then I'm going to wipe off the excess. Then I'm going to go in with a different metallic spray paint and repeat that process over and over and over again until I get the desired result. I actually had all the supplies on hand, the ornaments, the baking powder, and all of the metallic spray paint. So this project actually didn't cost me anything. And I think these look so perfect for the theme that I'm going with this year for Christmas. 
Now let's work on some Christmas artwork. So one thing I loved from this last drop from Studio McGee was this print here, but of course it's sold out and you can only pay like $100 for it on Poshmark or Mercari. So I thought we could try to come up with something similar for a lot less. To start, I found both of these oval frames at my local thrift shop for 75 cents. And for one of the frames, I wanted to add some music notes. So I found both of these sheets separately at the bins and I'm just going to trace out a section that I like to put in the smaller of the two frames. And and for the frames, I decided to also paint those black as that will be closer to the inspiration. For the tree picture, I decided to go on Canva, see what they had, and I found this one that I really liked and I thought would be perfect for the bigger of the two frames. So although my pictures are a lot smaller, I think they're so beautiful and just the perfect little accent for some shelf styling. Another ornament idea is to make some sweater ornaments. So to start, I found three styrofoam balls at the bins and some of them were a little misshapen, but that was okay because we're gonna cover them with this sweater. The sweater also came from the bins and it's one of those sweaters that's just like itchy when you wear it. So I never wanna wear it. So it's the perfect thing to kind of repurpose. I started off by just cutting off the sleeve sections from the sweater and I was able to get about three ornaments in each sleeve. Starting out by just pushing the styrofoam ball into one of the sleeves Leaves and then cutting off, allowing me to have a little bit of excess though so I can tuck it into the top and bottoms. Taking the bottom of a paintbrush to just kind of hollow out a section there so that way it wouldn't be super chunky at the top and bottom and it would kind of be nice and flush with the styrofoam ball. I added a little bit of hot glue to that hollowed out center and then just pushed down with the paintbrush so that way it could just stay nice and put and secure. In order for me to hang these, I needed caps. So I just took some caps from ornaments that I'm not going to be using this year and hot glued those down to the tops of these now sweater ornaments. All that's left to do now is add some pretty ribbon. And I think that this is a really great way to just use something that I already had. And I plan on making another set of three of these using the other sleeve of this sweater. What if your thrift store looks a little something more like this, where everything is super picked over, there's not even any ornaments to choose from. My biggest tip is to start using some household items as ornaments. For example, I found five of these little votives at the Goodwill bins. I paid $1.19 for all five of them. And I'm just going to flip them upside down because I think this gives almost like a bell shape, but it feels very modern, which is again, more towards the aesthetic that I am going for. So I'm going to add an ornament hook that I had on hand from other ornaments that I'm not using this year. I'm going to simply just trim down that wire that's on the inside so these can adhere to the bottom of these votives really well, just taking some little pliers or wire cutters and snipping those off and adding a heaping amount of super glue gel and hot glue in order for these to stay in place all season long. Wait for the super glue gel to cure and add some twine some pretty ribbon that you have on hand. And this is just one of many examples of taking something that is not originally an ornament. These are tea light votive candle holders and turning them into something that can be really beautiful and special for your Christmas tree. If you're not really crazy for the mercury glass idea, another item that I often see at the thrift store that you could use are these, and they're usually really affordable. I paid less than a dollar for all three of these. I think these would work better in a more kind of vintage glam or traditional tree. So this is another option for you guys to try. Another idea is to take some of these little mirrors. I see these all the time at the thrift store and just simply remove the mirror part. And you can always save it for later. So that way you can maybe put this up when Christmas is over, but it makes for a really beautiful, large scale, substantial ornament that is of a different shape but it was so affordable because it was thrifted and then repurposed. For another kind of household item that you might have already are balloons and I showed you guys this last year where you can just basically replace an existing ornament that you have, kind of cut the top of the balloon off, slide it on your old ornament and then just add some pretty ribbon and you can continually change the theme of your tree by doing this really inexpensive hack. The other hack, and I would use this hack very sparingly, is to blow up the balloon to be about like no bigger than six inches, okay? So something about this size, and obviously the more sphere shaped you can get it to look, the better the result will be. So I wouldn't use this maybe more than like four times in your tree because I think this can go really cheap and cheesy really quickly. Use it with caution, but I do think there's a time and a place to use it. So for example, 
there's this gap here. I don't, A, want to take up so much of my storage with ornaments that are this size because these take up a lot of space. So if you are in a tight space and you just don't have a lot of storage for like holiday decor, this is a really good hack for you to kind of keep in your back pocket. And beyond the storage, another reason I really like this hack is because it is a safe kind of ornament option. And it's going to, again, occupy a lot of that space. So you never wanna see that middle part of the tree like I can see right now. So I'm just gonna tuck that back in there and it just kind of looks like a big ornament as long as you're sticking with a balloon color that fits in with your color palette or color scheme for the season, I think it will work out really well might remember when I found the Red Lobster wreath for $5.99 and the only thing I really did at the time there was I just removed that lobster and it was already like a million times better, right? So with the leftover florals from that bag that I didn't use to make my new arrangements, I'm actually just going to kind of feed these into those gaps. I haven't done anything with this wreath up until this point and normally I do say stay away from hot gluing florals into wreaths just because it's kind of messy and then you're really like solidifying what that wreath is going to be. But like I said, I haven't done anything with this wreath up until this point. So I decided hot glue would be a good option here. Plus zip tying these little stems would be an absolute nightmare. So I'm just going to fill in all of these gaps with this leftover cedar. And already I feel like I'm at a good place, but then I came across this beautiful vintage looking bell for just $4 at the thrift store. Now, if you follow high-end home decor, you will know that last year these were so trendy and I think they're trendy again this year as well, but they are oftentimes really expensive. I know Pottery Barn sells a set of four of these for like $69. And while I don't have four, I just have one. I was actually intending on placing this on my tree, but I thought it would be a better fit to just place it on the inside of this wreath just to give it that really like Christmassy feel. And for just about $11, I think this might be one of my favorite projects for Christmas. Next up, if you've been following this high-end dupe series, you'll know that I particularly love going to the high-end stores to get inspired by how they're styling things, if they have a bowl, what's inside the bowl, how is it styled on a coffee table, and so forth. If you watched my Pottery Barn Dupes video, you might remember this really beautifully shaped glass bowl. So I ended up picking that up. And then also from the Dollar Tree, I grabbed these gold stems. I ended up only using one of them. So this is a really affordable project. I really loved this Lux bowl at Crate and Barrel, but it was just a little bit out of my price range. Just the bowl itself is $100, and then the stems were also extremely expensive. So I decided to make my own faux snow just using some Epsom salt, and I also picked up some of these crystal gems from Dollar General for two bucks. And then I'm just going to kind of strategically place these stems inside the faux snow, just like they did at Crate and Barrel. The thing that I really loved about that Crate and Barrel display is when the light caught on those stems, it gave a really beautiful reflection and I thought placed in a glass bowl would only further enhance that effect and I really love the way this project came out it only cost a few dollars to make and I think you get that luxe look on a budget To start, this inspiration comes from Pottery Barn. They are each $9.50 for the larger pine cones or the picks are just $4.50. So I decided I was just gonna go in my backyard, find some pine cones, and then I do spray mine down with an alcohol-based solution just to kill anything that might be living inside. And then I let those dry before adding the glitter glue. So this glitter glue actually came from Dollar General as well. But as I looked at more images from the inspiration picture, I noticed that theirs had so much more glitter than mine did. So I decided to add a lot more glitter using just dry glitter this time and just kind of shaking it on and then I shook it off to remove the excess. Like the Nutcrackers and the Little Houses, deer statues are seemingly a trend that is here to stay for this holiday season, and they do come at a pretty hefty price tag. So I'm always on the lookout for finding a cheaper alternative. And usually what you find at the thrift store are these kind of like paper mache things, which is definitely not the look we're going for. So when I found this deer statue for just $3, there was a little bit of damage and the overall color of the gold just felt a little bit gaudy. 
so I decided to go in with a more champagne colored spray paint that just kind of neutralized it a bit. Another deer statue that I found last year was this really beautiful iron candle holder. I plan on putting this on my credenza table with some trees, gorgeous, and was just $15.99. And last but not least, this year, not thrifted, but I found this kind of deer bust candle holder that looks so similar to the one from our house. I also found these restoration hardware candles for a dollar. If you see this deer bust at your local Marshalls or Home Goods, make sure you pick it up because I have a feeling it will sell out. To making these white ribbon ornaments inspired by something I saw on Pottery Barn's website. These ornaments were the most expensive on Pottery Barn's website and they were $19.50 a piece. Now these ornaments are much larger in scale than mine are, so do keep that in mind. The first thing I did was I found, again, a bag of clear ornaments for just $2, as well as some smaller white ribbon that I will use for the top piece in order to hang it. So I did find these pearls at the Dollar Tree as well as this white ribbon at the Dollar Tree, and that is what we will be filling these ornaments with. In order to to keep it somewhat consistent, I did decide to cut my ribbon sections off at the same section every single time so that way at least the same amount of fabric would be in there, even if it did decide to lay a little bit differently each time. And then I just evenly distributed one bag of pearls per each ornament and then capped them off with the original caps that these ones came with as silver was the color of the caps from the Pottery Barn inspiration as well. And then it's just time to wrap it up. Like I said, I'm going to be using ribbon from now on when I'm hanging ornaments from my tree to get that really high end look. And these are how they turn out. One thing that I really love that Pottery Barn carries during the holiday season are their festive dinnerware. So I love these plates, love the mugs, they're always so gorgeous, but I ended up finding a set of two of these at the thrift store, each just 50 cents a piece, and I'm actually just going to make an ornament out of it. So if ever you find a piece of decor that you really like at the thrift store, if it's small enough, maybe consider making it into an ornament just to give it a fun festive flair. The ribbon actually came from the bells in the first DIY project, and that really wrapped up this project. I love the sort of unexpectedness and just kind of thinking outside the box in projects like these, so I hope this inspired you to also try something new. One of the things I liked the most when I was shopping around and getting inspiration at Crate and Barrel was just kind of how easy going everything seemed. It was just a green candle with some faux snow and a hurricane base. And I think those are all things that you can either DIY or find at your thrift store. For example, I found this hurricane base at the thrift store for $2. We're just gonna do that faux snow trick with some Epsom salt and some crystal beads again. And then I found that green pillar candle for just 30 cents at the thrift store. So this makes it a super affordable product Project. If I were to buy all of these components through Crate and Barrel, I would be spending about $50, but instead I spent, I think, about five. Because that's the goal, right? We want the high-end look, but on a budget. Another hurricane vase I was really happy to come across, but this was several months ago that I found this one and I purposefully bought it. I wanted to save it for Christmas. It's originally from Z Gallery, just under $50, but I only paid five bucks for it. I was so happy when I pulled it out because honestly, I forgot that I had picked this up. And I think that this is a large scale piece. It occupies a lot of space. It fits in with my color palette and it is so budget friendly. And you can definitely use the battery operated candles, but I just prefer the flame you get from a real candle. I think you get a more luxurious look in the end. One thing I'm always looking for when I'm out thrifting to kind of replicate this high-end look is cedar or juniper garland because that is what is so trendy right now and usually at the thrift store, that's just not what you're gonna come across. But on a fresh cart, I had found this cedar garland for just $3 and I was so excited when I found it. I think that you can honestly never have too much garland. You can frame your windows, your hallways, your fireplace. There's a place for it everywhere in your space for the holiday season. So if you see it, make sure you scoop it up. For this year, I added a black bow to this garland. And then while I was at the Goodwill, I came across a set of three of these cedar garlands here. Now I'm going to remove some of the berries and sprigs that they have, but I think this is going to be perfect perfect for fireplace styling.
So in order to get this kind of more subdued look where the swirls aren't so evident, I decided I was going to try adding paint on the inside of the clear ornaments instead. So the first thing I did was I added my light color, which is Warm Buff by Apple Barrel. The black paint I used actually just came from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to dilute these ever so slightly just so they're a bit more runny. To the black paint, I did add this gold leaf paint that I've had in my stash for a while now, and I'm gonna mix those two together just to give a sort of like shimmery black quality so it is a little bit metallic still in the end. After I was able to achieve a more runny consistency with both colors, it's just time now to fill it inside the ornament. And the reason I really did this was because I wanted that still shiny exterior, almost like a true marble would be. So I first started off by adding the darker color, which is that metallic-y black. And after I was able to fill it up just a little bit, I swirled that color around the inside of the ornament. And there is a translucency to that, but, but once you continue to add the rest of your colors, it starts to kind of fill itself in more. So then I'm just going to take the lighter of the two colors and add that color in, and again, kind of swirl it around. Once I realize that the ornament is completely covered in paint, I then flip it upside down and I let the excess kind of just fall out. I usually just leave it there until the drips kind of stop. And then you just wanna flip it right side up so you can allow the air to kind of get to it in order for it to totally dry. I ended up spray painting the caps of these ones black, again, to give it that much more modern effect. And this was the end result. If you are someone that happens to have a lot of kind of smaller ornaments that are all kind of the same size like these ones, making them into kind of one cluster ornament is gonna help you with these kind of gaps. So you can see this black hole here. If I just had one of these ornaments, it's not gonna fill that spot. So if I put three of these together, then it creates a lot more volume and that's gonna occupy that space so much better and make the tree just feel that much more filled in. So as you can see here, now that gap is kind of filled in and I'm just going to kind of take that wire and wrap it around this branch back here. So first thing I did was I flipped the sweater inside out and then I kind of cut out a silhouette of a stocking shape. And then I'm just going to have the good sides facing together so the bad sides are going to face out and I'm going to sew all around that perimeter section there. For the top, I wanted to just kind of have it be open so it was going to fold over. So I'm just going to sew this remainder top section as well. This sweater cost a whole dollar at the Goodwill bins and I was able to create six sweater ornaments and one sweater stocking for just that amount. And I think that that is a really good way to make use of something that you already have. Another ornament that gets weirdly expensive on these high-end websites are picture frame ornaments. And one thing you can almost always find at the thrift store are small little picture frames. So as some of you might know, my dad passed away this past June and this will be our first Christmas without him. So I wanted to take a picture from my baby album and just make a black and white copy to add it as an ornament on my tree. I simply cut that picture down to the appropriate size and then I needed to add a hook to the back of the picture frame so that it could hang. So I took the cap of another ornament that I wasn't using and then just super glued that to the back, added some pretty Christmas ribbon and this will be one of my favorite ornaments on the tree this year. A decor item that is frequently used in high-end decor is nutcrackers. And you can usually find these in all different material shapes and sizes at the thrift store. So for example, I found these crystal ones that are tapered candle holders, but I saw on Crate and Barrel's website, they had these ornaments. A set of five of them will cost you $30. They are quite small, but I thought we could probably find something similar at the thrift store. So I found two of these wooden unfinished nutcrackers for just a dollar a piece. All I'm going to do is drill a small hole through the top, and then I'm going to add a nail so I will be able to add the twine in order to hang it from the tree. This is a substantial ornament and it was so cost effective. So last year, Pottery Barn had these trees here and they were so beautiful, but again, quite costly. And a new product I saw for this Christmas season were these lit faux twiggy tree in burlap for $149. So I'm always looking for either picks or something that I could DIY so I could light this up and turn it into a tree. But then I found 
this burlap tree here for just $5.14. And when I tested it in the store, it didn't work. The lights didn't work. So I just brought it home and I changed out the batteries and it worked perfectly. So an easy fix. I hide the pack behind it and it's the perfect little styling moment on any credenza or dresser that you might have. But of course you don't have to make it into a wreath. You can leave the garland as is. So for example, I found this beaded garland that looks really modern and really pretty at the Goodwill bins. I also found this clip garland that lights up so just to make it feel a little bit more festive, first I'm going to test it, make sure that it works, place some batteries inside of there. I also found this berry cedar garland for just a dollar. So we're all in with this garland, just $2. And I think I can display either some Christmas photos or I could display Christmas cards for the season. I'm just simply going to zip tie these two pieces together. I'm also going to add additional cedar that I had found at the bins just to hide the battery pack and make it easier to to hide the hooks that I hang them from. The next ornament project is coming to us from Crate and Barrel, and that is to make these berry and pine filled ornaments. So to start at the thrift store, I came across this huge bag of clear ornaments for just $2. As I was opening all of the ornaments, I noticed one of them had some blue filling already inside, so I just decided to remove it so I could start fresh, and I'm going to make a set of eight of these. So the first thing I did was just removed all of these caps because I'm actually going to cap them with something else that I'll show you guys in a little bit. But now it's just time to prep the ornaments for filling. So it's helpful to have a cup for the ornament to kind of sit on top of and a little bit inside of so that way you just have a little bit more flexibility when you're filling these and the first thing I'm gonna fill it with is this faux snow from the Dollar Tree it's helpful to just cut a slit actually at the bottom rather than open the top because it makes a lot less of a mess and believe me this stuff is messy with the snow all filled now it's just time to add the greenery and the berries so I ended up finding all of my greenery and berries and things like that at the thrift store and paid about a dollar for each of them so that is a really affordable price point so I had eight ornaments total and I decided four of them would be strictly greenery and the other four were gonna be berries mixed with a little bit of greenery as well I ended up adding about three to four stems of the greenery in each ornament and then for the berries I found that it was helpful to just kind of coil it around a little bit and that's just because it makes it a little bit easier to fill and I just kept repeating that process in both sets of these ornaments until they were completely Filled, and you guys might remember that I found these beautiful ornaments and I stuck them in a thrifted brass bowl but I really loved the caps of these and it felt like such a waste if you can't even see them in this bowl they should be better displayed elsewhere so I actually stole the caps from these ornaments and I placed them on our DIY ornaments to get it to be as close as possible to those crate and barrel inspiration ornaments and one thing that I noticed is this is always how I used to previously hang my ornaments on those traditional kind of paperclip looking hooks. But on every high end home decor site, when they're displaying their Christmas ornaments, they are almost never using those hooks. So they almost always use ribbon or twine or suede ribbon or something like that. So going forward, I think that's what I'm gonna do as well, just to give it a more elevated look in the end. One of these ornaments from Crate and Barrel is $8.95. And I was actually able to make a set of eight of these for less than that. It's coming to us from CB2, and that is these really beautiful and modern marble swirl ornaments. I ended up thrifting this pack of 15 gold ornaments. Now they are glass, which I think might have affected the way this project turned out. So I did wanna mention that these are glass, they are not plastic. But what really sold me on these was the shade of gold because it matches my kitchen cabinetry pulls perfectly. So the first thing I did was I just grabbed some kebab sticks and attached them to the caps of these ornaments. I also added some frog tape just to make sure they were nice and secure before we hydro dip them. So I tried a couple different methods of spray paint. I first added this white gloss spray paint and then black over top of it. But the end result is just not really what I was looking for. It ended up being really clumpy. I think that gloss spray paint was just a bit too severe for this project so after that I just dumped that water started fresh using only the black semi gloss and that worked out really well what I love so much about this project is that every ornament is just slightly different but you get an overall similar effect 
For each of these ornaments, I'm continuing to use the same water with the same spray paint spray to the top. I'm not adding more spray paint or anything like that. I'm just continuing to use the same mixture until all of them are complete. So out of the eight that I tried, I would say six turned out really well. I took them outside and sealed them so they would stay nice and protected. And then I brought them back inside once the sealant had dried and I just decided to add these caps on instead just to further give it a more modern look. And also I think I'm going to add some suede ribbon to the top of these just to really amp up the modernness of this DIY project. But I love how these came out and it's definitely something I recommend you guys try. Another decor item are also those ceramic houses. So I shared this in my last video where we kind of talked about finding these little village houses and if they're not the right color, it's no big deal because you can just obviously spray paint them. So I did that with these and I went with this shiplap spray paint. But for the ornament version, I found these at the Dollar Tree and I thought they would be perfect. Again, drilling a small hole through the top, adding a hook, and it's the perfect addition to my Christmas tree this year. But my favorite element by far has to be the florals that Pottery Barn carries during the holidays. They are so beautiful. They look so luxe and high end and quality. So the next time you're at the thrift store, and I want to share this because I almost missed this bag, is whenever you see these bags of florals, go through them because every now and then you will find a hidden gem. So this potted plant I bought from the Studio McGee line last fall at Target. And I love the pot and I love the stems for fall, but I thought, why don't I just change out the floral? keep everything the same the branches the height is perfect but I just want to switch out the actual foliage so I ended up finding that bag that I thought was just basic scraps but I think it's supposed to be maybe cedar and I'm going to save the purple leaves for next fall I'll place those in a bag and I'm just going to swap these out for Christmas and I think it's such an affordable way to just get so much more usage out of a piece of decor without having to buy a whole new potted plant spend another $40 at Target right so this bag only cost me one dollar and I'm actually gonna do this to not one but two of the Studio McGee pots and I think that this is a really fun way to save some money and get a high-end look on a budget. It is coming to us from Pottery Barn and it is this ceramic and wood bell ornament with a twine ribbon. And the last time I was actually at Dollar General, I came across this set of two bells for just $5. So the bigger bell I'm gonna do something different with that I'll show you just a sneak peek of, but the smaller bell I thought was the perfect size to make this ornament. And then to hang it, I ended up just using the twine that these bells originally came with because that was similar to the inspiration from Pottery Barn. Now for the wooden piece that was going to go on the inside of this bell, I didn't have have any scrap pieces of wood that would be this size, but I did have scrap driftwood in my stash. So I decided to choose the longest one that I had and I just hot glued it to that center prong that the bell was originally hanging from. What was nice too is that metal inside was kind of weak, so I was able to kind of manipulate that driftwood piece to be directly in the center very easily. And then the last thing I did was I just took my lighter very carefully and I just burned down those fibers so it was nice and smooth. And because the other bell was so big, I just decided to make it into some shelf decor, so I just removed that top hoop and added my own, and this is the end result. Some of you may remember when I found both of these baskets that were brand new with tags at the Goodwill for under $15 for both of them. One thing that really helps me is to actually bring the planters or the baskets in the store so I can kind of visualize how something is going to look. Because my mom did request a real tree for the front, I wanted to make sure that the scale was appropriate for what I was going to be using it for. So for the smaller of the two baskets, I'm going to use this tree. But for the larger basket, I wanted to add that rusticity to her front porch so I thought having some logs with maybe some pretty stems would be the perfect touch but the logs that I had that were free that were cut were just a little bit too short for this basket so to add some height I'm just going to cut down one of those Dollar Tree hampers and place the logs on top of there so that way you can kind of see them sticking out a bit more. Once the basket was all the way filled, I wanted to add some of those traditional Christmas colors with the red and green. So I found these stems at my local thrift shop. I found three of them for $2 a piece and decided to add those in the basket as well. The 
other component I wanted to add was something that was seasonal appropriate that would be kind of slender but add some height. So when I found this sled, I thought it was perfect because just like the baskets, it had that kind of two-toned look. The only thing I didn't love was one of the tones was still just pulling a little bit too orange for my liking. So I tested a small area on the back of this sled just to make sure that it was gonna look the way I thought it was going to look when I sanded it down, and sure enough it did, so I just decided to sand the entire thing down with first 120 grit sandpaper, and then I went in with 220 to finish it off and make it nice and smooth. Once we kind of styled it in her space, I feel like it's still missing something, so I wanna hear from you guys. What would you add to this sled? We thought about using bells, we tried putting a wreath, we also thought about adding her numbers of her house on there. So what do you guys think we should add to this sled here? As I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite things Crate and Barrel does are their faux floral arrangement. It's $129 and I thought we could definitely come up with something from the thrift store that's a whole lot less. I came across this bundle for just $2 and then I was looking for a white kind of ceramic glossy vase, but I couldn't find one. So I ended up opting for a sort of fishbowl style of a clear vase and we are just going to take some gloss white spray paint and we're only gonna spray the inside of the vase because I still wanted it to have that really nice shiny sheen on the exterior, but I wanted the inside color to be white, if that makes sense. I ended up doing three really light coats of the gloss white spray paint just to make sure everything was really well covered and then I sealed it as well. I brought it inside once it had dried and then now it was just time to add our faux florals. I trimmed each floral stem down to the appropriate size and for just $3 I think I have a really similar look on a budget. In my last Crate and Barrel video, we were kind of decorating for fall and I wanted to make a faux fur blanket because while I was at Crate and Barrel, they had these beautiful faux fur blankets, but they were so expensive. Usually when you're at the thrift store, this is kind of what you find. But when I was in the fabric section, I looked at the dimensions and I thought this would be perfect for a blanket because I'm just going to face these two separate pieces that were basically the same size and I'm simply just going to put them together. So to start, I'm actually going to face the good sides facing together and the bad sides facing out. And I'm going to pin along all of the sides except for about half of one of the sides so that way I'll be able to flip it right side out. After turning it right side out I just needed to hand sew that remaining side there and that really wrapped up this project. For $10 I have a beautiful modern cozy blanket for the holiday season. And last but not least, ribbon, ribbon, ribbon. If you find good quality ribbon at your thrift store, it's usually really affordable and you can use it in so many different ways. So one thing I've been seeing so many high-end designers doing is just tying it in a little slouchy bow, adding an ornament hook to the back and adding it to the tree just as so. Another thing that I've done for years, and I know my mom did it as well, is to take kind of the thicker wired ribbon and to kind of coil it around. Now this does not have a wire, so I'm just going to add again some ornament hooks to keep it in place so again it just fills in those big gaps in the tree but so affordably and that really wraps it up for today you guys thank you so much for watching if nothing else I hope that this just inspired you guys to think outside of the box and just prove to you yet again that it does not have to cost a lot of money to have a beautiful home for the holiday season with that being said I hope everyone has an amazing week bye for now